Hey, everybody. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to Matt and Ali, who have been amazing MCs to this entire event. And thank you so much to Natalie, Donna, and all the other organizers and staff. Everybody give it up for them. They work really hard. All right, let's do this. I am Dead Program. In the real world, some people call me Ron, that's not important. And I am a technologist for hire. That is my official title. At the hybrid group, where we are all technologists for hire. Hint. I'm here to talk about, however, TinyGo, a Go compiler for small places. So a few current stats, if you don't know anything about TinyGo. Uh, 13,000 plus stars on GitHub. 750, I think, six forks. Uh, this is already out of date. Boy, that was quick. Uh, 150 plus contributors. Thank you so much to all of those wonderful humans. 94 different hardware boards supported and lots of sensors. So that's pretty awesome. We just came out with TinyGo 028.1, and here's a few highlights. 300 plus commits are in this release, so I can only talk about just a couple of interesting things. Reflection support. If you've been waiting for reflection support, well, it's there now. It's really, really working quite well. You can use encoding JSON now. Yes! Go Wasm import. So uh, if you haven't been playing with Wasm, this is actually a new uh, directive that is landing in Go 121, and uh, we've been supporting it for a while, so welcome to the party. Uh, no, but the big question is, now that Big Go has support for WASI, do we still even need TinyGo? Well, I'm going to answer that question real quick. So this is uh, Hello World compiled with uh, the uh, Big Go uh, RC2, and it's uh, 1 megabyte, 28, uh, 1.28 megabytes. Yeah, that's 1.28 megabytes. Same Hello World in TinyGo is 93K. Yeah, let me hit you with that again. 1.2 megabytes or 93K. So you may still need TinyGo. So TinyGo in the wild world. We've got so much. First of all, the TinyGo keyboard from Takasago-san, who's one of our erstwhile contributors from Japan, uh, doing some really amazing stuff to make your own custom keyboards that are programmed with TinyGo. Pretty awesome and did an entire workshop with custom keyboard programming using custom keyboard boards. I wish I was at that. That really looks pretty amazing. So Uroot. Uh, Uroot is a, a user land like BusyBox that is written entirely in Go, and you can use TinyGo to, to compile the command line tools, and they're obviously a lot smaller. Uh, the FPV head tracker from contributor Yuri Saldak, who is a Russian living in Sweden, uh, doing some really amazing stuff with uh, first-person view on radio control airplanes. Yeah, let's let, hang on for the loop. Woo, that's so fun. Uh, Embedded Systems 101, so you want to get started, there's some really great videos. Recently, uh, Soy Pat, uh, Patricio Whittingston uh, of South America did some really great videos introducing TinyGo and long-range radio. Uh, Firewatch, which is a reference application created by Manolo Evans, my son, he's here looking for a job, by the way, if you want to talk to him, uh, with TinyGo and Long Range Radio uh, connected to AWS. Uh, performance evaluation. So a recent actual academic paper from the Department of Computer Sciences at Kaunas University of Technology in Lithuania. So uh, I have to give you this money shot, the big quote. The results of this study reveal that though the C++ programming language is widely believed to be the most efficient for embedded programming, this is not always the case. In a few cases, the C, C++ algorithms were outperformed by algorithms implemented in TinyGo and Rust. Moreover, the TinyGo algorithms demonstrated jitter-free execution, making this language more preferable for hard, real-time applications. You've heard it from the academics. But let's jump over to that wild, wonderful, wacky world of WebAssembly, and specifically WASI. There's so much going on there. Uh, Fastly, uh, Fastly has a couple of full-timers, uh, like Damian Grisky and Dan Kegel, who actually work full-time on TinyGo. And the newest Fastly compute at Edge SDK has got amazing TinyGo support, so kudos to them. Uh, Spin 
uh, from Fermion, a really amazing company. They're using TinyGo extensively, and they actually just gotten ripped, uh, written up in the ThoughtWorks radar. ThoughtWorks radar is uh, something that's looked at by big companies and enterprises to decide what they should use or not use, so kudos to that team, and also shout-outs to TinyGo and the ThoughtWorks radar. That's pretty cool. Uh, Hygress is a next generation cloud native platform that is in use at Alibaba that I only found out about because my Chinese is quite bad when there was a very difficult to understand but interesting support request entered. So super interesting stuff going on over there. Wazero, it's a WebAssembly runtime created by our friends at Tetrate Labs. They're using TinyGo extensively. A number of contributors to TinyGo are also on that team. So they had a 1.0 release fairly recently. So congratulations to them. Yeah. Capsule. So Capsule from friend and contributor Philippe Charrier of France. Uh, it is basically lets you run serverless functions using TinyGo on top of WebZero. So yeah, it's all go all the way up and down and to the sides. That's really cool. WZProf or WizProf. I'm not sure. They say pronounce how it looks. I don't know what that means. But from our friends over at Stealth Rocket, also contributors to TinyGo. So performance profiling in real time using WebAssembly and Go. Super neat stuff. And uh, you may have heard of this little thing called Kubernetes. Well, the Cube Scheduler Wasm extensions uh, that you can find in this repo are using TinyGo. So yeah, we're going where no Go has gone before. Well, actually, some Go has gone there, but <laughs> turns out. All right, so let's take a look, go back to the hardware. Uh, the earring rings from TinyGo project founder, uh, Ika, who's in the back of the room. Uh, these are really amazing rings. Uh, they look really cool. Uh, some people have turned them into cufflinks already, so uh, they're really awesome. The gopher badge. Some of you have gotten gopher badges created by Conejo, Daniel, who is not here right now. He had to leave to go home and uh, do some parenting. So uh, really awesome stuff. We say hello to Conejo. Come on, everybody. Hello, Conejo. All right, thank you. And then, of course, there was the GopherCon hardware hack session. That was on the workshop day. So if you don't know about that, um, you don't have to pay extra. It's on the same day as the workshop. So you should plan on showing up next year. We bring large quantities of hardware for you to borrow, check out like a library program, and have some fun with. So that was pretty awesome. And then, of course, Tiny Globo 2. You may have seen our Pico balloon launched yesterday into high altitude. It uh, left Berlin heading due south through Dresden. Um, uh, went pretty far, actually. So this is a map when we first lost contact. I don't know if it was shot down by the German Air Force or exactly what happened, but uh, we did lose contact. So Tiny Golang, it's real. It is here, and it is for you, my dear friends. Check us out on social medias at TinyGolang. You can check us out on our website, tinygo.org. And I thank you very much. Doing. <laughs> <laughs>